everyone. My name is Catherine Corrigan. I'm a senior uh, advisor for Outreach and Partnerships at Natural England. I'm part of the National Connecting People of Nature program team, which are a team of passionate people who steer strategy around nature connection and bringing people together for the benefit of both people and nature. Um, next slide, please. Oh, I've got it. <laughs> so I work on projects across um, the country from a public engagement perspective, focusing on inclusion. Um, that also includes partnership development, making sure that we are working with new and diverse voices to ensure that we are reaching audiences that haven't engaged with nature recovery in the past, and also create events that appeal to different people and bring people joy. I am local, I'm from Teesside, um, Middlesbrough. I grew up there, I still live there now. Um, and before my time at Natural England, I worked very closely with communities in the area. So I'm very well acquainted with the demographics and the barriers communities face in engaging with nature, but also other um, public services and how we as an environmental sector can help alleviate those inequalities. So you'll see that nature recovery needs people. And a quote by David Attenborough, um, no one will protect what they don't care about and no one will care about what they have never experienced. And that is true. Um, so in this quick 10 minutes, um, I'd like to steer our gaze around how in the environmental sector we value biodiversity for nature recovery, but I'd like to look at how we can work with diverse people engaging with nature. So nature supporting local initiatives. Not everyone feels competent enough or knows enough to dive straight into conservation projects. So we need to engage people in topics that matter to them. That could be through mental health. There's already some great work being done in the Tees Valley through Roots in Nature, Green Social Prescribing. That is a topic that we really need to get involved in and how we can embed that into everyday um, projects. Community cohesion. I've been quite lucky enough to join a few community cohesion projects, working with um, people on their asylum journey to feel more comfortable in their local and new landscapes and the wildlife we have here. And then we've got social isolation. Um, there's a lot of lonely people in the Teeth Valley and it's detrimental on people's mental health and day-to-day -day experiences. Nature-based activities are fantastic in connecting with nature but also connecting to each other, befriending groups, community allotments, things like that. And I've added faith there because this week it was Eid on Wednesday and hundreds and hundreds of the Muslim community from Middlesbrough went to Albert Park in central Middlesbrough and prayed together. And it was a really beautiful sight. It was people connecting to nature and connecting to their faith at the same time. Something that's really important to them and how the environmental sector can be at events like that to be involved. But there's also another route in getting people involved in nature and feeling, having them positive experiences where they feel confident, they're getting a lot of enjoyment, and that's when we're going to get more people caring for nature and then acting for nature recovery. So there we've got connecting people with nature through nature-based activities, art, poetry. Sherston's already done a really great example of that today. Um, heritage. Heritage is quite a big one for me. Um, I always talk to my colleagues about one of my kind of favourite like, views and they're always shocked because it is the industrial Teesside coastline. It reminds me of my childhood of self-care and engaging with nature that way. But it's about the amount of people I've seen over the years painting that skyline, taking pictures of it, it matters to other people too. We've also got meditation, people watching, coffee with a view. That picture's from me as well. Um, I don't know why, but I always, on my lunch break, just walk around with a coffee, and I feel very connected to nature in that way, um, be it the local park that I go to, or it could be the North Yorkshire Moors, or the North East Coast that we're very fortunate to live very close to. And then we've also got stargazing, people connecting to nature at night, flying a kite, t taking away the notion that the weather has to be beautiful to engage with nature on a hot, sunny day, there's really fun activity that you can do when the weather is windy, and that could be flying a kite, which, again, is really fun to do on the beach. And then we've got dancing, things that people are passionate about. But these are quite creative ideas, and I'll show you an example of how Natural England has been delving into unfamiliar territory as well, which is through our 
social media influencer work. So during COVID, a lot of people were getting out and about, and we wanted to widen the message of, of the countryside code in a way that would bring confidence to people and allow them to enjoy the, the countryside or even urban parks in a different way. So we worked with a number of organisations, people who reach demographics that wouldn't necessarily be following Natural England's official social media. Um, in the middle there, we've got Harun Mota, founder of Muslim Hikers, and they create some amazing content to reach their audiences around the countryside code in a way that inspired them. It was really approachable as well. They can really put their own personalities on it, the way that maybe a government organisation couldn't. We've also got our newest ambassador, Sean the Sheep. Um, if people would like to um, use Sean to spread their messages around the countryside code, um, please get in touch. We've got some really cool partner assets that we can, can be used for that. And then lastly there, we've got lifestyle influencers. As someone who spends far too much time scrolling on Instagram, I am very guilty of that, um, content creators have massive followings and they do influence their demographic. This is for people who weren't necessarily in the outdoor sector or outdoor influences, lifestyle influences, if you say it. So that's people who would like to go to the park with a family, have a picnic, um, and then how to do that with the countryside code. But yeah, this is very much about new ways of working creative ways of working and working through others. We don't always have to be the leading voice. We can work with people who understand the uh, demographics better, have that trust in the community and how we can message through them. But we do need to understand our communities that we're working with. So, barriers to nature. People experience a lot of barriers to nature in the Tees Valley. That could be a financial, physical, but also psychological. But a lot of people who don't feel as though they've got a sense of belonging in nature or they might have not had the best, best experience in the past. We've also got local feelings about local places. How do people feel about our local places? Can you really connect to nature if you're on a walk but you've got, you're looking over your shoulder and you don't feel quite comfortable in the environment? You can't connect to nature that way and it is an enjoyable experience. How do people want to connect with nature? We need to co-design and work with communities to engage nature in a way that they want, in a way that suits them and helps them on their journey in the Nigeria recovery movement. What will improve their visitor experience? This also includes pre-visitor experiences. So how are we advertising our events? Are we going places where we have our usual um, regular people who come to our events? Are we going places where there's a high footfall of people who are under, underrepresented in nature? Um, that also includes people who might feel confident in going to an event. Is there a map? Is there a toilet nearby? Is, there, is the path wheelchair or pram friendly? Things like that to consider. Um, we've also got um, translations as well. If you are working in a community group that don't speak English as a first language, getting that message out there, you might need to use translations. And who's missing? Who's missing? from our planning meetings, our events, um, people who are steering the conversation. Do they replicate the Teeth Valley demographics? And how can we get them there? That's me, as a child, very much literally connecting to nature. Um, I was very fortunate enough to be connected to nature throughout my life, but not many people are. People do experience barriers to nature. And it's through nature connection that I have ended up in the environmental sector. Um, it is mostly about how to engage people, how to inspire through fun. And the more people we inspire, the more people who will want a green career, the more people who can have them informal conversations with people in green jobs at these events, because not everyone knows someone in the environmental sector in their personal life. So it's about inspiring people to connect to nature, nature recovery, but also the sector, and then hopefully we'll become a more diverse sector. And when I come to more events and conferences, there'll be people from my background. But yeah, thank you very much. Any questions? I've got the email there, but I'm around today. Thanks.